Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. up in red licorice. I can't stand when this happens. Oh, it's Schemer again, Mr. Conductor. This is his new tourist booth for all the visitors we're expecting here today. Well, Stacy, what does Schemer's mashed potato mix have to do with Shining Time Station? <laughs> or this? Well, I'm sad to say they have nothing to do with Shining Time Station, but Schemer thinks he can sell them, so that's why they're here. Which is a very sad story indeed. And that reminds me, Today is my day to sit in the sob story booth on the island of Sodor and hear all the engine's problems. Then I try to help them sort everything out for the best. But isn't that kind of hard? Giving advice, I mean? Giving advice isn't so hard. Matter of fact, advice is sort of like birthday presents. It's usually more fun to give than it is to receive. All right, step aside, step aside, aside your steps, aside your steps. Watch it now, something important's here. Hello, you. We have to talk. What is this? Well, Miss Jones, if you really must know, it happens to be a A1 top-notch, top-of-the-line robot. Hey, come on, come on, wake up, wake up, people. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? This robot's going to do everything that I normally do. Take care of the arcade, take care of the tourist corner, polish my nickels. Basically, uh, do everything that I tell it to do. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Schemer, it's brilliant. Schemer, it's crazy. Everyone has to do things for themselves, whether it's making a drawing or cleaning your room or fixing your bike. You are just jealous that you didn't think of it first. Oh. Nah. Girls, be prepared to have the eyeballs fall out of your head. <laughs> ah, watch yourself. Ah, oh, 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 hey, whoa, wild man, wild man, slow down. I, I'm Schemer, the supreme financer of nickels and then monetary things. You are robot. I command you, speak. Would you like to try a kielbasa sausage? Huh? It goes great with our freshly baked buns. <laughs> Hey, well, listen, this is an arcade, pal, not a supermarket, huh? Well, maybe you have to show it what to do. Wait, wait, just, just be quiet for a second. I'm thinking. Maybe what I need to do is just show it what to do, that's all. All right, uh, robot, follow me. There you go. All right. And yeah, now you're thinking now. Now you're thinking. Whoa! Okay, come to this way. I think I'm going to call you Roby the Robot. <laughs> hey, you look good and great, pal. All right, over here. There we go. There we go. That's it. Look at me. Hey, uh, uh, no, over here. This way. I'm over here. Hey, hey. Well, there's a big old washing machine out there, and it wants to eat us. Now, that's no washing machine. What is the matter with you, Tex? Oh, sorry, Rex. It's a clothes dryer. And it wants to eat us. Whoa! I kind of like it. Wh what? You're telling me you can dig such a big, scary, weird thing? Mm -hmm. Just because something's big and weird-looking doesn't mean we have to be scared of it. No, it doesn't. But let's be scared anyway. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of big babies. Okay, now time for some serious robot type stuff. Robot, I command you. Sweep. Yes, Supreme Financer of Nickels and Monetary Things. 
No, not, I mean the floor. Sweep the floor. The floor, the stuff underneath those things you call things. Will you just give me this thing like this? Nice long strokes like this. Don't forget the corner. Looks like Schemer's having some trouble with his robot. He says that there are some kinks to work out. Well, that could be. But it could also be that Schemer hasn't taken the time to find out everything he needs to know about his robot. Yeah, but it sure would be kind of neat to have one, don't you think? I mean, a machine that could do everything. Oh, I don't know any machine that can do everything. You see, machines are good for some things, but there are other things only a human can do. After all, even the engines on the island of Sodor need engineers and conductors. And when the engines forget that, things can get very confused. Let me show you what I mean. Henry and Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. They had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. The big engines thought they were too important to fetch coaches. James grumbled too. We get no rest, we get no rest, they all complained. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack, you're lazy and slack, they answered. Altogether, the engines were causing Sir Topham Hatt a great deal of trouble. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Topham Hatt had made them so that the tender engines can be turned round because it is dangerous for them to go fast backwards. Little tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But to hear Gordon talk, you would have thought that Sir Topham Hatt had given him a tender just to show how important he was. You don't understand, little Thomas. We tender engines have a position to keep up. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for Sir Topham Hatt to make us do shunting, fetch coaches, and go on some of those dirty sidings, it's, it's, well, it's not the proper thing. Thomas chuckled and went off with Annie and Clarabelle. Disgraceful, Gordon hissed as he ran backwards to the turntable. The turntable was in a windy place close to the sea, and if he was not on it just right, he put it out of balance and made it difficult to turn. Today, Gordon was in a bad temper, and the wind was blowing fiercely. His driver tried to make him stop in the right place, but Gordon wasn't trying. The fireman tried to turn the handle, but Gordon's weight and the strong wind prevented him. It's no good, they said at last. Your big tender upsets the balance. If you were a little tank engine, you'd be all right. Now you'll have to pull the next train backwards. Look, called some boys. There's a new tank engine. Oh, it's only Gordon back to front. Hello, called Thomas. Playing tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice. Scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, hissed Gordon. You might stick too. No fear, chuckled James. I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind puffed him round like a top. He couldn't stop. Well, well, said Gordon. Are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. That night, the three engines had an indignation meeting.
It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. Gordon has to go backwards, and people think he's a tank engine. James spins round like a top, and everyone laughs at us. And to add to that, Sir Topham Hat makes us all shunt in dirty sidings. Ugh! Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. We'll do it tomorrow. Sir Topham Hat will look silly. The engines had decided to go on strike. They went on strike? You mean they weren't going to work anymore? That was a sad story. And what happens next is even worse. But my tale of woe will have to wait, for now I must go on my sad, sad date. There. All done and ready for some sob stories. So long. And think of a good sob story for me when I get back. Okay. Now it is time to mop the floor. I command you, mop the floor. Hey, 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 hey! Not on, not on me, you drunk! Get out of here! Stop it! Look at what you're doing! Look at what you just did! Look at what you're doing! What? Are you having some trouble with your robot? No, no. Everything's as smooth as cake. Cake! Try a taste of new cakes! I'll throw it! Quiet with the fruits! Oh, it's just a, just a few bugs to iron out. Bug spray! I'm special this week! Quiet with the bugs! Don't kill me! What? Listen, she's just a little unfocused because of all the people that are all over this place. But once we get a lot of people in here, he's gonna zing, buzz humming right along. Okay, if you say so, schemer. Mm -hmm. But it looks as if... Your robot is attracted to the jukebox. Don't be silly. What could a jukebox have to do with this? Nothing. Okay, well, I hope you're right, because I don't want anything to go wrong in the station today. Not with you or your robot or that jukebox. What the heck is with you and this jukebox, huh? What is it with you and... <laughs> genius time. It is genius time. A light bulb in Schemer's attic melting the snow-capped peaks. <laughs> of course, you simply want to hear a song. And as we know, music hath charm to soothe the savage robot. That's uh, Billy Shakespeare. Here we, here we go. There, now, let's get to work, huh? sob stories I heard on the island of Sodor. They were so sad. It was wonderful. Sad stories are wonderful? Of course. As long as there's a happy ending. After all, everyone likes a good cry now and then. <laughs> it's a horrible help me, help me. It's a horrible... <laughs> what is it? Oh, calm down. Why is the robot putting 
all your nickels in the jukebox. <laughs> because the robot is falling in love with the jukebox. <laughs> oh, you can't be serious. Robot loves jukebox. Robot loves jukebox. <laughs> Miss Jones. Oh. What am I going to do? Everyone's coming today with their nickels, and they're all going to buy my useless junk. And I I have an idea. Later, ladies. <laughs> okay, selection 489. Oh, Tito. We need a break. Are you kidding? We can't keep playing. But this is the best gig I ever had since I was a Tito in the box. Hit it. I know that Robbie's just a machine, but it is sort of like he has real feelings. And all Schemer does is hurt his feelings. That's right, Kara. And it's sad when someone hurts your feelings. But it's an even sadder story when you aren't allowed to do what you do best. What do you mean, Mr. Conductor? Well, I have a feeling that Robbie isn't supposed to work at an arcade. I think he's supposed to work in supermarkets. Oh, so that's why he's always talking about food. It's easy as pie. The problem is, Schemer was so busy trying to find an easy way to do things that he never bothered to learn anything about his robot. But what can we do? Well, I have a feeling that things will work out somehow. After all, didn't they work out on the island of Sodor once Percy arrived? They did? But you didn't tell us yet. I didn't tell you about the day when Percy arrived in the yard? How sad. Sir Topham Hatt sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The passengers were angry. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking. There's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Tom Hatt, we cannot allow that. He found Gordon, James, and Henry looking very cross. Come along, Henry. It's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't shunt like little tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We're important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. We'll see about that, said Sir Topham Hatt. No engine on my railway is too important for small jobs. And he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those freight cars, please, Edward, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. But next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise! They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt. And last night they said I have gray wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop, and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last, he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Sir Topham Hatt brought Percy back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? 
Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. <whistles> went Percy. Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you wished him, laughed Edward. I can't wish like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to wish loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Sir Topham Hatt sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said to Edward. Shh, shh, here he comes, replied Edward. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. So I have shut them up, and I want you both to run the line for a while. Little tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir, answered Percy. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, greeting each other as they passed by. Percy puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Clarabelle, but both driver and conductor promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Gordon, James, and Henry were cold, lonely, and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly. You know, we usually learn something very important from sad stories. And speaking of learning, listen to what's happening just outside the door. The tour! Stacy's giving her tour right now. Come on, let's go. I'm so Shining Time Station is really about all the beautiful artifacts that date back from 1885 to the present. The things of beauty and age that represent the very best of our past. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, how about the robot behind you? What robot behind me? Would you like to pull some of our prickle calves, livers? <laughs> oh. oh. That was a great tour, Steve. Yeah. Well, thank you. It was a pretty good tour until Schemer's robot showed up. Schemer, it looks like your robot is a big hit. It, it is? I mean, yeah. <laughs> of course it is. I knew it would be, and you were worried. <laughs> What's that, Schemer? Uh, this is a little uh, love interest for my friend, the robot. Oh, oh Schemer. I don't know, Schemer. I mean, you were kidding me? These two were made for each other. Ed, you can say it. Schemer, you're really Cupid. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Robbie. Time to fall in love. <laughs> I want a souvenir from this station. One souvenir from Shining Time Station. Thank you. How much is that? It is one souvenir. Here is another one. Attention shoppers. Today only. Everything free. May I help you? I'd like a souvenir too. Two souvenirs. <laughs> better help schemer yeah we wouldn't want the robot or the lawnmower to get hurt <laughs> problem jukebox will not play anymore hey that's the way the cookie crumbles don't even say it <laughs> you know i'm getting the idea that you're not much of a labor saving device let me think of that i think more nickels required. You get off the Just give me one. No, you one nickel. No, you... It's not too much to ask. It's not like it's a whole job. <laughs> How many, Tito? We're counting. We're counting. You know, I've changed my mind about that robot. Love sure is grand. Grand theft, that is. <laughs> Well, cool dudes, what's the word? Hiya, Barton. What can we do for you? Well, Stace, I got trouble with the scheme, man. Hey, trouble with schemer. Hey, Barton, why don't you make like a tree and 
take a hike. Schemer, I had a chin wag with someone down at my general store who told me you have a junior assistant who's muscling in on my racket. He's selling head cheese, pork roast. Hey, hey, nuts. hey, 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 selling? What, are you kidding me? He couldn't sell peanut butter to a penguin. Oh, come on, give me a break, huh? You gotta be... What? What? Come on! I brought you a perfectly good lawnmower and you're falling in love with Barton Winslow's motorcycle? Mm, if I had half a mind, I'd... Uh, genius time. Uh, hey, uh, Barton, old pal, old trading partner of mine, how'd you like to make a little... deal rooney Yeah, well, what kind of a deal rooney daddy-o? Well, let's just say that uh, you get an assistant for absolutely free, and I get rid of an assistant for absolutely free. Oh, come on. Now, what would I be doing with a robot who can only work in arcades? Yeah, but Mr. Winslow, Robbie doesn't work at arcades. He was supposed to work at supermarket. Yeah. You wouldn't be pulling Barton's left limb now, would you? Hey, bro, what's the word? Motorcycle! Rum, rum! Yeah, well, I could dig that. Would you like to try some devil-larded beef? You can think that even more, Schemer. You got yourself a deal. I'll take the tin man off your hands. Come on, metal man. Let's moto. Affirmative. I will be vacating the premises. Good, Good luck, luck, Robbie. Good luck. Good luck. Well, Schemer, I hope you learned something from all of this. Yeah. Never order anything from the back of a comic book again. Is that all? Uh, never introduce a robot to a jukebox? Schemer, don't you understand? You run your arcade better than anyone else. You were doing just fine, so why would you let someone else do for you what you do best by yourself? Uh, no, why would I? I mean, I don't know, why would I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why would I? Why, why would I? Why would I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you machines are all worthless. You, uh, and jukebox, you're worthless, and vacuum cleaner over there, you're worthless. And you, lawnmower, you are worthless. 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 <laughs> Reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see, so far to travel, so much to learn to know Friends by your side Hopes to hold on to Who knows how far you'll go To a 